Hey guys, today I'm talking about the new DJI Flight Update 1.9.4. This is now available. What does this bring to you and should you go out and actually download this? Let's get straight into that video. So first of all, let's have a look at what it says. So this adds support for a new drone, the DJI Mini 2 SE. I talk about that throughout the video. It also says it fixes certain issues and optimized overall app quality. And currently when recording this, it is not available on the DJI RC controller. So I'm going to be using the old classic DJI N1 controller. Now for me, and you might be the same, I use it as a backup controller. I love the DJI RC controller. It's probably my favorite one, but I've not used this for so long and using it on today's tests, I really have started to enjoy using this again. There's a few reasons why. Let's discuss that throughout the video. So firstly, let's get this installed. So I'm gonna to have to do a new firmware update on this controller. And then going through the aircraft models, we see, what is this? And DJI Mini 2 SE, what is this sorcery? So don't get too excited. This is basically a DJI Mini 2, but it's gonna be not as good so yes it's got all the good features so it's nice and portable 249 grams it's going to have 31 minutes of flight time now this is not going to be available throughout the world it's only going to be in certain countries it's going to have things like quick shots panorama photos but looking on the spec sheets this is going to top out 2.7 k so it's not as good as dj mini 2 mini 3 mini 3 pro but it is available now you will notice it when you are selecting your aircraft model for us today we're going to be concentrating on the mini 3 pro and if i could ask you if you are new around here just consider subscribing if you like tech and drone content i've done loads of videos so go and check them out and so many more good exciting videos coming really soon as well so i really do appreciate it and give this video a like all right on to the settings so first of all one thing i really do like and i can't remember if it's ever been like this before so do tell me in the comments this now is split screen so i can see the settings on one side but i can still see what my drone is seeing as well now on the dji rc it covers the whole screen so you can't really see anything so this is great that i can still keep an eye on what that drone is seeing especially when it's in the air so under safety we're going to go and look and make sure that that is set to bypass this will mean that the drone will then detect any obstacles and go around them. I want to have sideways flight on. My flight protection, make sure you just go through there and select your altitude, your distance, your return to home altitude. All that should be selected before you even go and take off. And then just scroll to the bottom, advanced safety settings. I would recommend you just keep this on return to home and emergency propeller stop on emergency only don't switch it to any time so once you've gone through that we're just going to go into control select your units metric draw imperial and then the gain and expo tuning so this is basically where you can fine tune the controls of the aircraft and the gimbal so if it's moving a bit too quick for you in either the aircraft or the gimbal you can move these and tweak them to make it either faster or slower I'm not going to go through all that today but one of the good things i remember from using the n1 controller is we now have phone charging on ios so if your phone battery is low you can select this on and then it will automatically charge your phone as well button customization is important on this n1 controller so go through here and make sure you've selected any of your button customizations to either press or double press there's only one fn button which is a function button on here so it's important to set that now under camera, I have all of mine selected to the right hand side. I shoot in D-Cine like in H.265 format MOV, but that's because I use everything Apple. If you're using a Windows computer or a computer that can't really handle H.265 files, I would keep it for on H.264 and MP4. Today's video, I'm just gonna keep it also under normal color profile. Grid lines, I'm gonna switch the middle grid lines on, I want the rule of third set up. And then under style, put that to minus one. You don't want anything with noise reduction being implemented in the daytime and making that footage look soft. Everything else under camera settings, we can just leave it as it is. And under transmission, I would just keep that set to dual band. Let's get back onto the home screen now. I'm gonna select it now from 4K 30. I'm gonna be shooting in 4K 25. But again, another thing I'm really liking about using this on an iPhone 14 Pro Max is that this whole DJI Fly app is so quick and responsive and snappy. 
I've never seen anything like it. Now, before we just move on to the actual flight, I want to just tell you that all these settings, I have created cheat sheets because they are really hard to remember the exact settings to actually use on your Mini 3 Pro or your Mavic 3 or your Mini 2. So I've created these cheat sheets. So you can print these out or they can actually be downloaded and stored on your phone. So you've always got these with you. So it's like a really handy guide of going through these settings and basically just knowing which settings to use in certain situations. So because these are digital files, you can get these instantly, just $9.99. And they do these for the Mini 3 Pro, the Mavic 3 and the Mini 2. Let's get into this. So another reason that I've really enjoyed using this N1 controller is that this whole experience using the menus, switching between different settings is so fast, much faster than the DJI RC, much faster than the DJI RC Pro. Using this N1 controller and my 14 Pro Max iPhone, also it has a 2000 nits of brightness when outside. Again, more than the RC Pro and the DJI RC incredible right let's switch over now and let's just test out a few things so in vertical mode let's just take a photo here so make sure in vertical you've got jpeg and then jpeg and raw raw is going to allow you to edit them files much more including presets if we take a look at video so vertical mode i'm just going to be testing out this gimbal you can see now it's just moving upwards really nice and smooth on that gimbal towards this pier so that is working great so vertical mode photos videos spot on Switching back now to horizontal mode, I'm just going to put it into sports mode and go through a few more settings. We just had our first wind warning message. It's windy. It's about 28 miles an hour gusts at 100 meters, which is what I'm at now. So that you can see from the attitude indicator, the Mini 3 Pro is doing all right as we approach this pier. Let's imagine this to be in a much nicer location, but even in Blackpool, it's making it look pretty good. So I'm going to switch over now as because I can do really quickly to 4K 60. I'm going to test out this slow just over this pier now i haven't got an nd filter on this is my downfall today so i'm going to be changing my shutter speed quite a lot but as we go over this pier now i've got it in 4k 60 so that is great for slowing that footage down i wouldn't film in 4k 60 all the time but it allows you to slow down things and this looks great from going from fast motion to slow like this especially over the sea something which you've got lots of waves and again, here we can just switch it into cine mode. It's still in 4K 60. And then when you look at the actual 4K file now from DJI, you can see it looks really nice and we can slow that down again. And again, just imagine that this is not Blackpool and this is like the Maldives or somewhere. This would look awesome. If we take another photo now, I'm just going to try and get this lined up. So this is why it's great to have these rule of thirds on. It doesn't seem like that pier is 100% straight. So I'm just really trying my best to get this lined up, but it's, it's proven quite difficult. So I'm just going to take a picture here. Again, the JPEG file and then the RAW file, you can just mess around with the colors to your heart's content to get different themes. Always shoot in JPEG and RAW. And just as we're moving back now, just another gimbal test. Everything is working great. Now, I really can't remember this DJI Fly App being so good on the DJI M1 controller. Yes, I used it last time on the iPhone 13 Pro. This is the 14 Pro Max. I really can't see it being any difference in the phone, but the app is just so quick and snappy. It's just worked brilliantly today. I've really enjoyed it. So if you are using the N1 controller, or maybe like me, you haven't for a while, just go and actually update the firmware, go and have a go. You'd be quite surprised. So I'm definitely going to continue using the DJI RC, but this is going to be used a bit more than I have been for sure. I really have enjoyed it. It doesn't pack some of the features like the RC, which does have like a dedicated photo button and the zoom button. I do miss them, customization buttons, but overall it is good. Now I will be taking a look onto the DJI RC when it's available on that. So I'll be testing that out. So make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys really soon. Bye-bye.